everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I'm getting ready to stitch out the lamb ornament. This little ornament is from Kimber Bell's Happy Hoop Decor Volume 2. This is the nativity scenes and I've got my instructions printed out right here. I have a piece of fabric ready to go. I have it backed with iron-on, this is a Pellon Featherweight 911 fusible. And this is some medium cutaway stabilizer. So I'm just gonna get right to this and I will put a link in the notes below for the CD. You can get this on Amazon, so I'll put a link below. And the first thing I need to do is to put some cutaway stabilizer in the hoop. Although the pattern calls for a 4x4, I'm going to use my 5x7 hoop because that's what I have handy. And I don't get real crazy about actually measuring it out. I just make sure I have like an inch over here and a little bit over the top and bottom and an inch on the other side. And that's all I do to make sure that I have enough stabilizer for the project. So I'm just going to this in here and hoop it. On the brother hoops there is a little bitty arrow on one end and a little mark at the at the other. I put the arrow at the top and just kind of get it as straight as possible. It really doesn't matter because this is going to be cut away and once it's in there firm I just recess it just a tiny little bit to put some extra tension on the project and then finger tighten the thumb screw and that's it. I'm going to need four pieces of white fabric so I'm just going to cut them. I'm going to do a rough cut right now. Let's see I've got a scrap end right here from another project that I've cut and I'm going to iron this and make sure I get the wrinkles out and everything. This is not an exact science. You can actually do this with scraps as well. And I'm just going to do, I don't know, a couple of four inch pieces. Not a big deal. You need one piece for the base of the lamb body. And then you need three other pieces for the chenille part of it. And I'm just going to trim this right here. So there's... One, two, this is a folded piece of fabric, so three, four, there we go. So there's four pieces of white fabric and that will make the body of my, my lamb. A lot of these, these are gonna be cut away, so it doesn't matter, they don't have to be exactly perfect and you're gonna shred them with scissors anyway. But you just need four pieces. All right, there's my lamb. To make this project, you're going to need your background fabric that has been backed with fusible featherweight or medium weight stabilizer. This is actually an interfacing. I just use Pellon interfacing. It works fine. I'm going to need four pieces of white fabric for the lamb and the chenille. You're going to need some curved embroidery scissors to be able to trim in the hoop. You're going to need your instructions and I recommend a firm surface to put on your lap to make it easier to trim. You're also going to need an emery board or a chenille stick, but an emery board will work if you don't have one, and you're going to also need a seam ripper, very sharp seam ripper. This is one of the ones that my husband makes. You're also gonna need all of your threads, and I have a thread stand back here, and I put like here's the gold that's going to be for the the hay. Here's the black for his little feet, pink for the nose, and of course white for any of the white stitching that has to happen. And I just pull all of the ends up into this little spring up at the top. I will link to this below. This is the handiest thing. And I just keep it behind the machine and kind of out of the way of the hoop. Okay, so at the luminaire, I'm just going to touch and I'm going to go to embroidery and the pocket for memory 
and I want to pull up the design I sent wirelessly. So this is the icon for wireless. If you, if you have it by USB, you would touch the USB symbol right there. There's my LAM1 right there. I'm going to hit set and embroidery. It's ready to go. Okay, the first stitch is placement line. It really doesn't matter what color it is because it's going to be hidden inside of the hoop anyway. And I'm using an Organ 7511 embroidery needle. Thread the machine by hitting the needle thread button. All right, and we're ready to go. It was that simple. Just pull it up in the machine, hit set. Now you want to put your background fabric in. Make sure you cover the placement line all the way around by at least half an inch. We're on step number three. I need to do a color change. I want to show you how easy it is to do with this thread tree. I'm going to cut it back here and hold on to it. And then I'm going to put this tail back up into this little spring like that. And then I'm going to grab the black end of the black thread. And what I do is just loop them together, make them think that they're one, and tie a single knot. And then I pull the thread through the machine from in front of the needle and then thread the needle and it's time to stitch out his feet okay it's time for a thread change for the placement line for the body of the sheep. We are on step number four. I'm going to take my first piece of fabric that's going to be the body of the sheep and I'm just going to cover it completely and let it stitch down. We're on step number seven, so you need to remove the hoop from the machine and trim around the stitching line and get rid of all this excess fabric. You don't want to remove the fabric from the hoop, leave everything just as it is, but this is where these curved scissors come in very handy. They have a nice sharp point and you can get in and trim around the fabric without uh, trimming your stitches. It's very, very handy. Next is stitch number eight, the lamb decorative outline. I'm not gonna do a thread color change. I'm gonna leave it white. Put the hoop back in the machine. Whenever you do this, you wanna put your hand on the arm of the machine and push so that you don't make it move at all. If you do, you'll have to go back a step or two using the needle plus minus button to be able to get back to where it needs to be. Don't take the fabric out of the hoop. Next is the face, and I'm going to use a light silver gray for that, so I need to do a thread color change. Okay. 
I'm going to switch to a darker gray to go around the outside of the top of the head. We are on step 9B. Change the thread for the nose and another thread change for the eyes. It left a little tail here. I'm going to go ahead and trim that. I'll clean that up afterwards. All right, it's time for a thread change to stitch out the chenille. We are on step 11, so you need to take three pieces of fabric right side up and layer them over the whole design. And I'm going to do a thread color change. And it's going to stitch the chenille stitching. This is a basting stitch. Okay, you're going to want to remove the hoop from the machine. Let me get you up close so you can see what it did. This is a basting stitch right here. These are real long basting stitches. You do not want to cut those. And then it did a series of triple stitches to create the chenille stitching. So you want to trim around the basting stitches without cutting through them and get rid of these three layers of fabric right here. This is another reason not to go cheap on these scissors. These are gingers. Not only do they not hurt your fingers, they're incredibly sharp and they can handle this kind of triple layer cutting with pretty good ease. We'll take out the basting stitches later on in the design. But you should be trimming away the fabric and not removing that outer decorative stitch line there. Sometimes it doesn't make sense, but when you do a Kimberbell project, you just got to trust the process. These folks know what they're doing. All right, time for a thread color change to do the, the little gold hay. Now you want to stitch the final stitch, and I'm not going to change the thread color because it's going to be hidden inside of the hoop. Okay, the design has finished stitching, but we still have some work to do to make the magic happen. Remove the hoop from the machine. You can remove it from the hoop. Take your project out. And now you want to remove that line of basting stitches that uh, was put down before the chenille stitching. So this is a magnet. I'm just going to pull this off. And you want to get in here and you're going to want to remove these because you're actually going to take your seam ripper and cut through all three layers, all top three layers of fabric. Let's see if I can. It's kind of hard to tell from the back. So you're probably, uh, like on the body you can, but I don't want to cut something I shouldn't. I'm going to go ahead and, and get rid of all these basting stitches and I'll get back with you here in a minute. Okay, so I have removed all of the basting stitch from around the lamb. And now you're going to want to take your scissors and you're going to want to cut through the top three layers, not the base layer. So, and just kind of trim through the center of that one. You don't want to do this right here. You want to do this one right here. So leave the outside one intact like it is. We're going to cut in between the, f the, outer the first stitch and the second. And we're going to cut right here. And again, right here, and again, right here, and we're going to cut through the middle of these three right here. Perfect. Now you want to take your emery board and you want to kind of fuzz up the fabric edges. 
Well, he's looking pretty fuzzy. All right. I also want to get this jump stitch between the eyes. And when you do your jump stitches, if you think of where the needle went from point A to point B, if you trim B first, it has a natural tendency to stand up and then you can get a hold of it a little bit better. So here was a jump stitch from the nose to the first eye. So I'm gonna stitch, I'm gonna trim under, trim away from the eye first. Then that kind of stands up a little better. I need a pair of tweezers to pull that. I, I'm gonna get rid of that little black stitch by the nose. Okay, now we need to make the hay. So to make the hay, you're gonna do it one at a time. If you look here, the way this was designed, it has large stitches back and forth here with a tiny little stitch, satin stitch down the middle. And then it went large stat satin stitches and a tiny. So what we're gonna do from the back is we're gonna tr uh, use a seam ripper and we're gonna cut the thread on the back don't cut this rib that goes down the middle. So flip it over to the back and I'm just gonna put the seam ripper under there. You wanna make sure you don't go through the stabilizer or you might cut your project. And then once that's done, you wanna use your fingernail and just kinda of pull up from the front and scrape it. There we go, and then do the next one. Okay, don't want to cut just yet. So now you can take some duck build scissors and trim your stabilizer away. I'm kind of using these backwards. You're supposed to do it like this. <laughs> and I'm going to trim it down just to around, I don't know, a quarter of an inch away from the stitching. You always want to keep your project facing you so you can see it and make sure you're not cutting into your project. And you don't need to clean this up. We're gonna put another piece of fabric over it and hide it. Oh, isn't he cute? Look at that. <laughs> okay, I wanna get up real close here and let you see exactly what happened when we made the chenille. So the basting stitch went all the way around the outside and you can tell the basting stitch from the rest of the stitches. It's kinda of hard because they're all the same color, but the basting stitch is very long. It's almost like a 4.0 stitch length, three and a half or 4.0. And it might not be a bad idea looking back if you wanted to make it like a gray and then you would be able to see it really well. And when you go to trim, there is, these are the chenille stitching lines that you get right here and right here, okay? So when you pull away the basting stitch from the outside, this part of it naturally will be able to be uh, pulled up and fuzzed. And then when you slice through the middle here on this one, and then you're gonna do the same again here and here and here. And the outside one, you don't wanna, you don't wanna cut that or trim that. Just all the way around on the, on the middle ones and then just the center one in the top of the head. So I hope you can see that up close pretty good and get the idea. And then once you fuzz it, it'll, you'll get that little sheep fuzzy. And again, just like the other ones, to get this uh, in the hoop, I'm gonna take another piece of fabric that's just like the front and put it face down. And I'm gonna just do like this. I'm gonna get it over to the edge so I might can have a big piece of it left. Put that like that, right? and then put them both over the inner ring and I'm going to kind of feel with my fingers and make sure that the outer stitching is going to go around the sides of the hoop all the way around and I want to place, I'm going to turn this toward me just a little bit, and I want to place the outer ring with the little screw mechanism at the top that will be hidden by a little bow. That looks pretty good. And then push it down. There. So that looks good from that side. 
and it looks good from the back as well. Let me pull this one to be just a little bit tighter there. Okay, that looks really good, and that looks good. I'm going to tighten this up, pull this down. On these, I am taking a little bit of hot glue right up underneath this center part right here and making sure to glue that down flat. I will be doing that. That looks really good. Okay, now I'm going to take my scissors and trim these two all the way around. Okay. Oh, that turned out just as cute as it can be. <laughs> Not adorable. Okay, you guys, so this was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed making it as much as I did, and I will be doing more tutorials on the rest of these ornaments. I will have a playlist on my channel for, it'll say, Kimberbell, Happy Hoop Decor, Nativity, and you can pull them all up and watch them to your heart's content. We'll talk to you soon. Go says something. Bye.